Okay, so up until now, uh, you may have um, been working with uh, two or three trials in a certain situation, okay, and you would have had a probability tree quite often, maybe a Venn diagram. Um, but what we're going to see today is how to extend this to uh, many, many trials, okay? Uh, could have hundreds if you want, okay? But we're going to start off with the probability tree uh, anyway to, to get us going. Okay, uh, here I have a biased coin, okay? A coin that somehow has a 70% chance of getting a tails. Um, and I'm just going to look at um, four flips uh, and then a, a fifth, uh, but that's not on the tree here, um, and look at the probability of getting a certain number of tails, okay? Uh, tails, so it's going to be the, the thing I want in every, the thing I'm looking for in every flip. Okay, um, now, uh, how am I going to find the probability of zero tails uh, with two flips? Uh, well, that is just going to be a head times a head, the probability of a head times the probability of a head. Um, and that's 0 0.3 squared, so that's 0 0.09. Um, with two tails, that's going to be the same, uh, but I'm just going to go down and down on the probability tree. And that's going to be 0 0.7 squared, so 0 0.49. Um, and then this strand is the word I'm going to use, and this strand uh, would both give me one tail. Uh, and if I multiply along the branches of those trees, uh, those strands, then I'm going to get uh, 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, 0 0.21. Uh, but I've got two of these, so I'm just going to multiply by two. Okay, um, so that's going to be uh, 0 0.21 times 2. 0.42. Okay, fine. Um, now, uh, what about three flips? Uh, well, I'm going to look at the next section of the probability tree. Uh, zero tails, uh, that's going to be 0 0.3 uh, cubed. That's just going to be this times this times this over here. Um, now three tails, uh, very similar, 0 0.7 cubed, down, down, and down on the uh, on the probability tree. So 0 0.3 cubed is 0 0.027. 0 0.7 cubed, 0 0.343. Okay, but then uh, if we're looking for the probability of one tail, uh, well, that's going to be this strand, this strand, uh, or this strand. Uh, that's uh, three options there. And for each one of those, I'm going to have two heads. Um, so 0 0.3 times 0 0.3, okay, so squared, uh, but times uh, 0 0.7 uh, for, the, um, for the tail. Okay. So if we just calculate that, we get 0 0.189. Okay, and then there are three options that would give you two tails if you have a look at the tree. Okay, so that's going to be, uh, I'm going to have 0 0.7 squared in that case. And that will equal 0 0.441. Okay, um, and I'm actually going to stop finding the final um, decimal probability at, uh, right now uh, because that's taking too long, um, and we'll see why in a second. Okay, because I'm actually going to be more concerned with how it's calculated. Okay, but the main thing to remember there that there were three ways of going down the tree uh, to find either one or two tails. Uh, for four flips, I'm just going to have. Uh, 0 0.3 to the power of 4 for four tails. Um, I'm going to have 0 0.7 to the power of 4. Okay, and now I've got, now I'm into my fourth uh, set of branches. Um, and if I had a good old look, I would find that there's four ways of going down the tree and just getting one tail. Okay, and so you'd be multiplying 0 0.3 by itself three times and then you'd have one 0 
Uh, same thing down here with uh, three tails. Um, there's four ways of doing it because uh, it's all quite symmetrical. Um, and if you, well, there are 16 options in total. If you look at the, the final end points of the tree, uh, so you could just uh, subtract from here, or you could count up how many ways of getting two tails, two heads, and it would be six. Now, the reason I've put uh, the these uh, coefficients uh, in bright green is because uh, hopefully you'll be able to spot a pattern now. Okay, uh, I've got one, two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one. And you might not notice that this is from Pascal's triangle from when you did binomial expansion. And this makes sense actually, because, uh, well, if I'm looking for uh, how uh, for two tails, um, I would be looking for out of these four sections of the tree, uh, how many ways could I place two tails in there? Okay, so this actually should be um, four choose two, and it indeed is okay. Like we we have with all the coefficients of the um, terms in the binomial expansion. Okay, so very similar um, things going on. Lots of connections there. Okay, so if I was doing five flips, um, I'm not going to draw the tree at all. I'm just going to say actually there are three ways of placing my three tails that I want in the five. Uh, slots okay out of the five flips so five choose three and if I'm getting three tails that means I'm getting two heads uh, and my three tails okay and from now on actually I might I might start writing this the other way around and there we have it uh, that would be the probability of getting five flips, and that can be calculated, but I'm just not doing that anymore. Um, okay, now, what if we wanted five tails from seven flips? Um, well, hopefully we get the picture now, um, and I can even write out a formula. Okay, n choose r, okay, that's going to be my number of trials, n, and r is going to be my number of tails in this case. Um, I'm going to have the probability of... Uh, getting a tail um, to the power of r, because I want it r times, and the probability of getting a head, which is 1 minus um, the probability of getting a tail. Um, and I'm going to need n minus r of those. Okay, just like binomial expansion, the two exponents add up to n. Okay, so in this case, it's just 7 choose 5. The probability of a tail is 0 0.7. Um, and I want five of those, probability of a head, well, one minus 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and I want two of those. Okay, and maybe this time I can calculate it. So uh, seven choose five is 21, uh, 0 0.7 to the power of five, uh, then times 0 0.09, 0 0.3 squared, um, that is going to equal 0 0.318. Okay, so we seem to have come across uh, a situation uh, or a technique um, where we can uh, use a formula uh, in, well, when we have these certain conditions here. Okay, I'm going to have n identical trials. Okay, in this case, a coin flip, but every time the probabilities are the same. Uh, two options, uh, in this case, heads and tails. Uh, in some cases, it, there will seem like there might be more, um, more than two options. Uh, for example, on a dice, okay, if you're looking for a certain number of uh, fives from n rolls, uh, your two options can be five and not five. Okay, so even though there are six options on a dice, you can kind of narrow it down to two. Okay, probability, the small p will be the probability of a single success on any one trial. Okay, and this is going to be a situation where you're looking for the probability of having a certain number of successes from n trials. And I forgot to say, I'm going to label these options success and failure, even when uh, we might not consider 
the thing we're looking for a success. Uh, so, uh, and that's especially true in this uh, final example, okay, because I'm going to be looking for defective light bulbs, um, but I'm still going to consider it the success in a way. Um, so I have a light bulb factory and we make 200 uh, light bulbs per hour. And, but on average, 7% of them turn out to be defective, they get broken. Um, so in an hour, I want to know the probability of getting uh, 15 defective light bulbs. Okay, so I'd use my formula from above. And uh, the probability of a defective one, 0 0.07, 7%. And I want 15 of those. And but a probability of a good light bulb, 0 0.93 and I'm going to need 185 of those. So um, you can use that formula, uh, but you might think that's starting to get really very long and cumbersome, um, or just some big numbers there. Uh, definitely zero chance of calculating that one manually, um, but you can do it in your calculator. However, um, if you are going to be doing something like that on your calculator, um, well, is there a quicker way of doing it on the calculator? And in fact, there is. And, and in fact, you won't be using that um, formula much at all. And it's not even in the formula book. Though. Okay, so you are going to be finding uh, what we call the binom PDF function on your calculator. On a TI-84, you will find that under second dist, uh, and then you go scroll up, um, it's not going to be on the first uh, page, but you're going to go up to option A, which is binom PDF. Okay, and you're going to type in N as the number of trials, uh, P as the probability of success, uh, and they're going to call it X, but we call it R, and that's the number of successes. Um, so you can do that on your calculator, and you will obviously also get 0 0.103. Now, the reason that the calculator process is going to be really helpful is because of this next question. Okay, I want to know the probability of um, less than or equal to 10 defective light bulbs. Okay, maybe to pass an inspection, you need uh, 10 or less uh, defective ones. So what's the probability of that happening? Well, uh, up until now, I can only find a, an exact number of successes with that formula or with binom PDF. Okay, and so I could actually um, find the probability of one uh, of zero defective light bulbs plus the probability of one defective light bulb plus blah 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 all the way up to 10 defective light bulbs. Now that's uh, really long, and if you're using the formula or even if you're using binom PDF, that's going to take you 10 minutes, five at least. And so, is again, is there a quicker way? And yes. Uh, this is going to be on the same uh, options, uh, the same uh, initial buttons on your calculator. Uh, it's going to be called binom CDF. Uh, the C, I believe, is stands for cumulative, okay, which makes sense because I'm adding up uh, 0 to 10, um, the probabilities of 0 to 10 defective light bulbs um, cumulatively. So binom CDF, and if you type in N as, as 200, uh, probability of defective 0 0.07, and they call it x value, but I'm going to call it r. Um, and you just type in 10, and it will tell you the probability of uh, less than or equal to 10, uh, 10 defective light bulbs. Just trying to do that now uh, on my calculator here. 200 trials. P 0.07 x value 10, and it tells me 0 0.166. Okay, a 16.6% chance that 10 or less, 10 or fewer light bulbs are defective. Okay, now that seemed quite convenient that um, I had uh, a function that told me less than or equal to exactly. Okay, um, and you might be thinking, are there options for, you know, more than, less than, um, greater than or equal to? Um, but no, CDF 
uh, let's get another color here. Only does at most a certain number of successes. Only does at most, or you another word for it would be less than or equal to. Um, that's the only option uh, on on TI eighty fours at least. I think for most calculators. Now, what if you needed at least eight detective light bulbs, the probability of that happening. Um, I suggest a little diagram here, okay, for the potential number of uh, defective light bulbs. I'm not gonna list that out all the way to 200, but let's have a look at what I wanted here. I wanted at least eight to be defective. My calculator can only do at most a certain number. So if I did at most seven, light bulbs defective uh, and I got 0 0.02742 um, that would be the probability of uh, all of these options added together um, and the probability of all 200 options will add up to one just like with discrete random variables um, so you would do simply one minus this uh, and it would tell you the probability of all the other options which is actually exactly what we want for this question okay that is most of what you need to know for um, binomial distribution which i'm just realizing i've only just said the name of okay so this kind of situation is called binomial distribution binomial obviously because of the strong ties to the binomial things you've done already in the course. And the most important thing is that it will not tell you that it's a binomial distribution question, uh, but because you know when it can be used, you need to be able to spot when to use these techniques, these calculator functions, and do everything we just learned about. Okay, great.